Building Science 101 is sponsored by Anderson Windows and Doors, Builders First Source, Huber Engineered Woods, Polyguard, Sashco, and ViewRail. All right, my friends, BS 101, Episode 6, Achieving Building Science. This is going to be a good one, Steve. I'm excited for this. It is, because in the whole series, this is kind of where we turn the corner, right? Up until now... If you've been following along, if you haven't, stop, go back. rewind, go <laughs> back right. to the intro episode and follow through and come back here. But up until now, we've been talking about we need control. We need control. That's we need to in, in, integrate building science. Well, all that is good. But the question is really like, how do we do that? And, and you know, we talked about why do we do it, but how do we do that? Mm hmm. Right. And I've always taken the position of to understand the solution, we might want to ask a few questions like, okay, we want to gain control, for example. Well, what are the challenges to gaining control? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the challenges of our building that I have to alter or control to gain control? And so break it down for us then. There are some specific things we're trying to control, right? What are those things? Well, when the wind blows, I don't want it blowing through my building. Makes sense, right? Okay. So I have to stop that. I have to provide some type of barrier or some type of, let's not use the word barrier. Let's call it management system. Okay. Let's, we have to apply some type of management system. To manage that blowing wind. To manage that blowing wind. When it rains, an umbrella, you used that um, earlier in one of the sessions that yeah. you put the umbrella up, well, that protects you. What are the protections of our house in terms umbrella of water management? A water management device, right? It's a water management system, yes. Where you use that to manage the water and keep it off our bodies. I go in a house and I cook or I have dogs or the simple act of breathing, we're putting moisture into the air. Yep. What happens to that moisture? Especially, remember, we talked about old, old buildings, old houses, everything just flowed through the wall. Now, with codes, we're required to build energy efficient wall systems yep. and these are going to hold back some of these controls or hold back that vapor so that vapor management system and, and the reason i call it a management system, we'll get into that in a second but um and the last one the whole reason that most people can identify why we build is because i don't want to be out there i want to be in here so that means i want to be warm when it's cold outside mm -hmm. i want to be cool when it's hot outside and so temperature control so i need temperature control or some type of thermal management yeah. system thermal control yeah thermal control yeah. so basically to control i need to develop systems that control those challenges so it just so happens in the building science world <laughs> guess what we call them <laughs> control layers yes, i love it Control right? is the theme of this BS 101. If you haven't figured it out, we've been building the last yep. five episodes yep. up to what are control layers and why do I care? So we got four of them. You want to run through them for us? We have four. We have water management. We have air management, vapor management, and thermal management. That's right. And that order that you said those is pretty important, right? That order, if we go back to, if it don't last, it don't matter. Water's the number one killer of buildings. Yeah. So what should I worry about first? Water management system. I've heard a bunch of people, uh, as I've gone to building science talks over the years, say, my phone is going to ring if I make a mistake on the water control layer at midnight. Whereas my phone's not going to ring at midnight if someone has a thermal issue, right? If it's too hot or too cold in this room, they're not going to call me at midnight. And so as we think about that order, that water, air, vapor, thermal, water is number one. We must manage that water. But then right behind it is air control. Because when air leaks in, we talked about this earlier, that air might find the dew point on the inside surface of a wall or a building assembly and condensation could occur. And if that happens repeatedly over the course of time, we could get mold happening on the back of our sheetrock. We could get all kinds of other things happening, let alone just uncomfort to discomfort, lack of control of that air. Uh, Steve used the analogy earlier about uh, having a house where the windows didn't close all the way. You know, if, if you had a couple windows in your house that you could 
physically shut the window all the way, wouldn't you call the builder back and say, hey, these windows don't work. I can't close them all the way. And that's the same when it comes to air tightness for our buildings. Now, I do want to back up here a little bit, Steve, knowing that some in our audience, um, we, you know, we probably have some high schoolers watching this. Uh, how do we measure air tightness in particular? And and hopefully I'm not uh, throwing you off base. No, 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 no that's, that's fine. I mean, all, all of these, I mean, water management is certainly measurable by just viewing it, right? Like yeah. if I see water inside a building, I know I have a problem. Yeah, that's right. But an air management system, how do I understand that it's leaky? Well, it just so happens that the building industry has verification systems. And in terms of air management, we have what we call blower doors. Mm -hmm. And blower door is basically taking the house to a certain pressure, measuring the air across the fan mm -hmm. at that pressure, and then being able to identify how much leakage the building is having at that point yep. based on calculations of the volume of the building. An analogy I like on this, if you'll, if you'll permit yep. me, is I, I love the idea of thinking about a blower door. It's this big, uh, you know, sometimes red door that you put, you take out the front door, you put this in, and it's got a fan that's calibrated, and you use this thing called a manometer, which is able to measure pressure differences, and you pressurize the house to a certain uh, number. It's a, a Pascal rating. And we're trying to get a difference between the outside and the inside of 50 Pascals and because the fan is calibrated, we're able to figure out how leaky the house is. You know, in other words, how big is the opening on the window that you can't close? And an analogy I like is if you think about uh, blowing up that balloon for a kid's party, we blow up that balloon and that balloon has a bunch of pinpricks in it. Well, if it has a lot of pinpricks, I'm gonna have to really keep blowing hard on that balloon to get it to stay inflated. And so this blower door is simply a measurement of how leaky is the house? How many pin pricks does that balloon have? Because if we're gonna gain control of our indoor environment, we're gonna need to reduce those pin pricks, reduce those leaks, reduce the amount of windows that don't close all the way down to a lower number rather than a higher number. If we had a window in our bedroom that would only close to a foot, We'd have a hard time keeping that bedroom cold in the summertime and hot in the wintertime, wouldn't we? Because we're not able to really contain that air very well. You know, so we, we developed this graphic here. I use this on, um, in my presentations. It's, it simplifies and we'll, we'll get in a little bit more in depth into the control layers. I wrote a few of the words here. But you can see we have basically the four layers, water being number one, air being number two, vapor three, and thermal four. Um, you know, and like you said, that's the order of importance um, that I place on that and that the industry, the building science industry places on that. So we really need to get the water because everything else depends on the building existing. That's right. And so we have to get the water. now. I've oversimplified it here. You can see, I mean, it's just basically a blue, red, magenta, and green plane on the wall. But two things are at play here. One, don't think of them as they're separated. They're fully integrated into our walls. That's right. We can have an air management system that is part of the water management system. It could, in fact, be the same material, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it isn't. Um, they can be layered like a birthday cake That's right. on top of each other um, or again, piggybacking. But the, the other interesting part of that is when you talk about control layers and the components, and I get this often, people say, well, what's the best air barrier? I don't know where you're talking in the buildings, hmm, right? Because good. if we're in the basement, it could be the concrete slab. Yeah. It could be the stego, the, the poly underneath it, yeah. right? It could be the drywall at the lid. It could be some other wrap yep. that I'm using there. Um, what is the best insulation? Well, it could be an air permeable insulation in the cavity. It could be a rigid insulation on the outside, on the inside. Who knows? It could be, you know, it could all be the same material. There is places in our houses where one singular material is all four control layers all the time. Piece of glass, 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. Great analogy. Yeah. Like, glasses when do you never look out a window. That window is our water management system. It's our air management system. It's our vapor management system. Because there's two panes that actually it's can a resist the heat flow. management system. Yeah. Right. So you have to think about when you're trying to achieve building science, we have this problem. We want to gain control. I need to apply solutions that solve for those challenges, right? When it's cold outside and I want it warm, I have to apply a thermal um, solution. But a lot of times that thermal solution could also be the air barrier system. So you need to dispel any thoughts about, well, this is my air barrier or this is my vapor retarder. I get that one. You get that one all the time. Well, the minute I put up a detail, almost instantly a hand goes up. What's the vapor retarder in that system? <laughs> Everything has a perm rating. Yeah. Everything is a vapor retarder. Yeah. Some things like glass are damn near zero. Yeah, that's right. Right? Some things like drywall are vapor open. Yeah. So everything is an air barrier. Everything is a water management system. Now, some of them might really be bad at it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that they're not repelling a small percentage. Yeah. Oh, great water, point. Right. Yeah. So we just have to, in our thousands of decisions, we have to pick the right materials for the right job, and most importantly, the right integrated approach mm. to achieve building science. Let me back up for one minute, Steve. As you were talking uh, earlier on the control layers, I wanted to make a, a quick point, and just thinking about, we're, we're really talking about modern housing, right? But as we Think about the church that was built in the field example that you used earlier. That's a wood building. Uh, you know, with the wood stove in that church uh, in the field, it actually probably was relatively comfortable yep. uh, in that house. And it probably only managed water in that it kept the occupants there on a Sunday service dry. But when the wind blew, the wind got through. Uh, when people were breathing, that vapor probably transmitted pretty easily from inside to the out. And if you had a wood stove, you could keep it warm, but without a wood stove, it wasn't very warm. So really it was really managing water. Let's back up another 500 or a thousand years in building technology. And what did we build with before we built with wood or before America was even around for that matter? Think about the cathedrals, the churches of England and Europe. They were all masonry buildings, basically rock, right? Some version of rock that was stacked on each other and maybe they had windows, maybe they didn't. The rock in those cathedrals did a pretty darn good job of repelling water, but they didn't necessarily do a very good job of being a, a good at managing or controlling air or vapor or thermal. They were just like really that wood uh, church example in the middle of a field. So as we come into more modern buildings with more modern uh, building techniques, we can still make those older buildings, those older styles work, but we have to think a little differently. And as we've been talking in this BS 101 series, Steve and I are really thinking more about modern houses using modern codes and something that if you're watching or listening to this right now, that you might build in your town. I just wanted to throw that yeah, out. Yeah, no, those are, to help those, us to remember. those are all very valid points. And, you know, the, the thing about control layers, too, is that, you know, those are linked to the, the things we just talked about in the previous episodes. Um, durability, mm -hmm. right? All four of these I can attribute to some level of durability. Yep. Uh, health and comfort. All of these attribute to health and comfort. Comfort, for example. You know how many times if I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say, yeah, I sit on the couch. I can't even sit in front of that bay window in the winter because it's just cold air rushing on my neck. <laughs> and I either have to be under a blanket or I can't sit yeah. on the couch there in front. Crazy. So it attributes to it, right? Energy efficiency. Obviously, thermal plays a role, but so does an air tightness, mm. right? You don't open your windows when you turn the heating system on. You crank up the boiler you keep the windows closed, not open. You don't want that air transfer. That's the easiest way to lose heat inside a structure yep. or gain heat in the summertime. You don't open your windows in Austin in July. No, that's you right. keep those puppies closed and crank up the AC. 
I got another great example I'd like to mention. A couple years ago, uh, Steve and our mutual friend, Jake Bruton, uh, were doing a giveaway for their podcast, which was a Yeti cooler. And they were cutting this Yeti in half. And they did it to show the analogy between a Yeti cooler and a modern house and how the Yeti cooler actually has multiple control layers. You know, I mentioned earlier the kind of foam cooler that you might get at Walmart for 10 bucks versus the Yeti cooler and how different they are. It's not just insulation, but there's an air tightness layer as well. And when Steve and Jake cut that Yeti cooler in half, you'll notice that there's a gasket around the entire lid. And a Yeti cooler with the lid open and some ice in it, it's not going to keep that stuff very cold for very long. It's going to perform basically the same as the foam cooler with its lid off, right? But the difference is thick insulation, a thick thermal control layer, but also a really good air tightness layer on these high performance coolers. And that's a great analogy for houses too. If you leave your doors and windows open, you're gonna have a hard time having an energy efficient house. You're gonna have a hard time controlling the thermal in your house, no matter what type of insulation or walls you have. But if we close all our windows and doors tightly, and we have good control over the airflow, now it does make a difference on our thermal control layer and are we able to actually retain that heat inside our houses in the wintertime. Anything else from that analogy that I missed? Yeah, no, that is that is perfect. I, I would actually flip on the, the bad side. I said everything is a control layer. I'm gonna use the example of, you know, just myself. I could be in Minnesota if I go out in a t-shirt, I'm going to be freezing, but wearing the t-shirt is better than going outside with no shirt on. Yeah. Right. So just because you put something on a building, you put rigid insulation on the outside. It doesn't mean that it's an appropriate level of insulation on the outside of my building. Yep. Just like you wouldn't wear a t-shirt in Minnesota in February, yep. you'd want to go for the down jacket. Yep. So you, you, I, I hope you can see, but this whole idea of climate tuning, tuning our buildings to their region, tuning the systems to our building, all of this stuff is starting to come full circle as we now look to say, okay, we understand we want to gain control. We understand we want durability, health, comfort, energy efficiency, but how do we do it? Yep. Right? Control layers. And I'm going to go back to the, the same old analogy. When you look at our bodies, right? We have water management layer yeah. called skin. Our skin, that's right. I could go in the ocean. My, my chest doesn't fill up with water unless I drink it. Yeah, that's right. Right? I have a great water management system. Yeah. I have a great air management system. The wind blows. It doesn't blow through my hand. That's right. Right? It blows onto my hand. Vapor control. Yeah. I sweat. When the humidity is high, I get evaporative. I think you and I actually have a little bit more more thermal control. Than it's some thermal other control. People. I don't know if you can see me if I stand this way, but I can't see you. I'm having a hard time. It's it's hard when I turn sideways. I get it. So, but uh, but yeah, thermal control. But our body is this systematic set of control layers that wrap around a structural system that operate in unison or in concert for the success of ourselves. And our building should do the same thing. I love that analogy. I mean, our houses, the bones, those two by fours are our bones. Uh, and Steve's talking about those control layers. This episode of Build Science 101 brought to you by our friends at Anderson Windows. You know, this is a long standing brand, Steve. They've been around for many, many decades. And the A series window they're making now is currently the most efficient, highest performing window that Anderson's ever offered. 30 years in the industry, Anderson, I remember my very first project I ever did, it had Anderson. Is that right? Yeah. So it's it's nice that we have a company here that is now developing their performance even further. It's great to have a domestic manufacturer that is developing their line of triple glazed windows and offering that option here. And even if FIA is certified, right? Meaning they've they've got really high standards for air tightness, for water holdout. Uh, this is really a top performing window. And you still get that beauty and elegance of a really nice aesthetic, you know, the muttons and all of that wrapped into that performance. And, you know, when you're talking about windows and if you bring it back to the building science level, understand that windows are everything in our control layer, right. right? They're our water management, air management, thermal, thermal comfort, 
everything is wrapped up yeah. in there. Yeah. And so window manufacturers are really tasked with probably the hardest job in building. Yeah, I mean, you're punching a hole in that perfect envelope that you yeah. made that's insulated, that's structurally sound, and now we gotta pop a hole in it and make sure that that window can control all that. So this is a tough, ta tough task. And these guys do it exceptionally well because not only do they solve the building science part, but they make it look great. Yeah, for sure. Last thing I wanna mention, Steve, is they make windows that you can specify as PG70 rated. Now, we're not, we don't have time to get into the, what the PG stands for and what this testing looks like, but the quick and dirty is, they test windows, every manufacturer does with this independent testing service, where they put wind and water up against these windows to simulate all kinds of terrible weather. And the higher the rating, the more that window is able to withstand the wind and the water from making it through the window. And a PG50 rating is already a very high rating. When you go to coastal applications, you need to go to that PG70 rating. And sometimes in the coastal regions, like if you're building in Florida, you're adding impact resistant glass as well but they can do it without the impact glass, but still the PG70 rating, which that's a great optional upgrade. That means that that window is really gonna seal tight. It's not gonna leak air. It's not gonna have water uh, coming through that window. And that's good for every region of the country. I was in a house the other day that uh, was in a dusty area, and because the wind was blowing, dust was coming right through those windows and piling up. Uh, on the window sills. So now, if we talk about a window that's PG70 rated, we're not gonna have those problems. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, they, their, their balance of performance and aesthetics is as good as it gets. For more information, you can go check these guys out on the web at andersonwindows.com. And big thanks to Anderson for sponsoring the Build Science 101 series. Next up on this, Steve, we're gonna really dive deep into all those control layers. Yeah, and the most important one in this order of importance is water, and that is our very next episode, uh, episode six, I believe, right? No, episode seven. I'm sorry, I'm off an episode. Episode seven is water. And it's gracious. Here's a little quiz for the audience. What do we say about water? It's the number one killer of buildings. That's how important it is. The number one killer of buildings. Control layers. This was a great episode, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Steve, Building Science 101, good stuff, guys. See you next time on The Build Show.